In our first video on YouTube recalling Ballinger's potential legal troubles coming out of the recent YouTube drama surrounding her, we talked about her rise to fame and the allegations that have come out about her. Specifically, we went into the alleged communications she was having with minors, where she was apparently talking about explicit subjects and sharing OnlyFans images so they could comment on them together. We also touched on some of the live stage skits that have surfaced with allegations of further impropriety with minors. In this video, we're going into another area where Colleen may have made some legal mistakes, and that's in the area of employment law. As a former California employment litigator myself, let's just say that there are some things here that she has done and said she's done that actually give me quite a bit of pause. Let's get into it. So in the last video, we talked a little bit about a 2020 video published by YouTuber Adam McIntyre, a former fan of Colleen Ballinger. In that same video, along with the other allegations he made, he also said that he did some work for her related to her social media accounts, and it sounds like this was unpaid work. And then she proceeded to tell me about how she was planning on making me her social media intern. Right now, I'm considering you my social media intern, but if things go well, we can talk about me hiring you part-time for an hourly rate. I don't like using your creativity and insight for free, so just know I'm not planning on taking advantage of your help. I'm planning on making it more official if it works out that way. How does that sound, Queen? Adam says he did a ton of work for Miranda Singh's social media accounts, and he gave tons of ideas to Colleen for the character, and that he wasn't paid for it. So since 2017, Colleen had been coming to me for video ideas, tweet ideas, Instagram ideas, anything for the Miranda Sings character, but also some for herself too. And whenever we talked about how Miranda wasn't really doing well anymore, she messaged me and then said, well, help me. And that's then whenever I started giving the tweet ideas. So on the 25th of March of this year, I started giving more ideas again because Colleen was aware that the Miranda character was becoming very stale and inactive on social media. And on the 26th of March again, she started tweeting my ideas, which included Animal Crossing stuff. So on the 25th and 26th, I presented her with about 15 different tweet ideas. Now, after Adam's video came out, Colleen eventually responded to this allegation in her own video explaining what happened. He's asked me multiple times if he can help me out with social media again. I always thought that was really, really sweet, but most of the time I did not engage in those conversations until recently. A couple months ago, he reached out to me and brought up the fact that the Miranda accounts hadn't been as active as they used to be and how he wanted to help me do more social media stuff. So he sent me a whole bunch of edited photos that he had in a folder ready to go for Miranda. He told me about a bunch of funny tweets he wanted to post and he let me know that he had experience working in social media. He really vetted for himself and because I'd known him for so many years, I was over exhausted and I don't have all the time I used to have to run all my social media. I thought, you know what, this might be a good situation to test run this and see if this could work out. This wouldn't be the first time I had hired a fan. I love hiring my fans for many reasons. One, they're super freaking talented. Two, they know me better than anybody. And three, I love supporting their dreams and passion in any way that I can. I've hired my fans to design merch, I've hired fans to go on tour with me, I've hired fans to edit things for me, and how hiring my employees works is I usually do a little test run to see how it goes. If it goes well, then I hire them officially through my company and they are paid legally through the corporation. It was no different for him. I wanted to do a little test run. If it went well, then I wanted to hire him. I will say that although she meant to clear the air and explain her side, what she just said is actually kind of a huge problem under California law. I usually do a little test run to see how it goes. Then I hire them officially through my company and they are paid legally through the corporation. And I'll explain why in just a minute. First, I have to thank this video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service with a mission to empower each and every person to express themselves through scent. They're a community of designer fragrances that range from big brands like Prada, Gucci, and Versace to small indie brands like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. For $17 a month, you get new perfumes every single month in small travel-sized vials, which is 
perfect for the summer season. For one thing, the size makes it easier to toss into your bag while you go on vacation, and the little case it comes in means you're not worried that they'll get smashed in your luggage. And you don't have to worry about getting bogged down with a full-size bottle when you find something that's just perfect for summer. I personally love the fact that you get enough to last you for basically a whole season, but not so much that you end up stuck with a single scent for like over a year. Anyway, the scents that I received were Not Your Girl by Deck of Scarlet, Magnifica by Furla, and Haltan by Parfum de Marly. To the people that actually speak French, I am very sorry because I am positive that I probably butchered that pronunciation. Anyway, I love these scents. They all have a high quality to them and they last a good bit. And although the regular price is $17 a month, if you are in the United States or Canada, if you follow the link in the description below, you can get 55% off. So it's just like right around $7 for that first month. So be sure to jump on that. And thank you once again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's go over a few things about work and unpaid work in California. All aboard! Now, it's one thing if someone comes up to a content creator giving ideas and offering material unsolicited. The act of offering ideas to a content creator on its own doesn't necessarily create a duty for the content creator to pay for those ideas if they didn't ask for it. But if someone approaches a content creator offering to go and make those materials for that content creator, and the content creator then responds with, sure, I'd love for you to go and make me something to use in my business. And by the way, here's some ideas for how I would want this to be done. This could trigger California labor laws, which by the way, are probably the most stringent in the entire country. I know this because I've litigated these kinds of cases myself. And let me tell you, a dispute over someone's unpaid labor that can start out very small can very very quickly multiply under California's matrix of fees and penalties, like to kind of an insane degree. Let me just give you an example. In California, it's not uncommon to hire a model for an advertising campaign. Let's say you hire them under contract for 10 hours for a single day. Say you pay the model $3,000 for the whole day. Not bad for one day's work. But if you don't pay that model immediately when they finish their work, immediately meaning within about 72 hours of their last working hour, then you're on the hook for waiting time penalties. This means that under California law for up to 30 days, for every single day that you don't pay that model his or her $3,000 that you owe them, you as the employer are required to pay them an entire day's wages for each day that you delay it. So for each day that passes, you owe them an additional $3,000. So if it takes you 30 days or more to pay that model, that $3,000 that they were supposed to get paid for one day's work then becomes $90,000. Now that's pretty damn good for one day's work. And that's not even including the interest that accrues and the attorney's fees that they are entitled to have paid for, as well as other costs associated with getting you to pay them what you owe them. The model would be entitled to all of that from the employer. So your failure to pay the model the $3,000 you owe them when they finish their work can very quickly become six figures. Okay, so how does this relate to Colleen? Well, Adam claimed that he was doing official business work on Colleen's behalf on her social media profiles. She apparently gave him access Access to the Miranda Singh's Twitter account. They discussed behind the scenes some potential tweets about it, and he put out what she approved, apparently. That sounds like that qualifies as Adam working for Colleen. And if she never paid him for that, that's the kind of thing that under California law could hook someone. Really, the only thing that saves Colleen in that specific situation is the three-year statute of limitations on these kinds of claims. Adam talked about this incident three years ago now, so surely the incident itself would have happened even earlier. But it's still worth talking about because because once again, Colleen makes an admission in a video, specifically her 2020 apology video responding to Adam McIntyre's video. And how hiring my employees works is I usually do a little test run to see how it goes. If it goes well, then I hire them officially through my company and they are paid legally through the corporation. Here, she just admitted that she has a pattern of practice of trying out fans as employees before she legally pays them through her business as official employees. The words that just came out of her mouth indicate that she routinely makes fans work for free before she 
gives them paid work. That is not okay under California law. If you give someone tasks for your business with the intent that they actually fulfill those tasks, you are getting value for that and you have to pay for it. If you require some kind of mandatory training for someone before they officially start working for you, you have to pay them for that time that they are spending in that training. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, such as unpaid internships. And under some kind of circumstances, I can see an argument being made with independent contractors who would be paid in kind of a different sort of way. But neither of those exceptions apply in these circumstances. For unpaid internships to be legal under California law, there are a bunch of requirements that have to be met. First of all, being tied to some kind of academic program that the intern is actually in. And that's just one requirement. And as it relates to independent contractors, California is arguably the hardest place to qualify a worker as an independent contractor due to what is called the ABC test. This is a three-part test that says that by default, any worker is an employee of the business unless three criteria are met. First, the worker has to be actually independent in the way that he or she does the work. In other words, the employer isn't asserting any kind of control over how they go about doing the work. Second, it has to be the case that the worker is doing work that is outside the employer's normal business. But here, posting to social media as Miranda sings is pretty damn central to Colleen's business. So if any of those three criteria are not met, that person is considered an employee, not an independent contractor. And in that case, a very large number of labor laws apply along with a lot of penalties and fees and all kinds of other restrictions. And the thing is, even if Adam himself cannot file a claim on these particular issues because it's just too late for him to file with the statute of limitations, if Colleen has continued to do this over the last few years, there are very likely to be other fans out there with the same kind of claim with cases that haven't yet expired. And as I highlighted earlier, the penalties, the fees, the interest, the attorney's fees, all of that can very, very quickly swell to a massive number. But that's not all I've got here. In part three, we are going to go over the questions that have come up around Colleen's activities with charity drives and the potential tax liability that she could possibly face as a result. Once that video is published, I will post a link in the description below as well as get it on the end screen to this video. But in the meantime, what do you think? Do you think there might be some other fans out there who in the last few years might have some unpaid wage claims? Let us know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this or at least found it interesting or informative. And if you did, I would love it if you could hit the like button. It does help us with those YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're new here and you wanna see more content like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can find out when the next video is uploaded. And with that, I'll see you in part three.